Well, I wasn't sure that the Kings were going to be able to top their 140-point performance over the Charlotte Hornets earlier this season, but that's before the Orlando Magic came to town. Sacramento drops 142 points in their victory. They've won five out of the last seven, their first three-game win streak of the season. Marvin Bagley continues to play well off the bench so well that should he be considered for that starting four spot? Rashawn Holmes keeps getting poked in the eye. The poor guy can't stay on the floor, but the Kings bigs make up for it. And De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton, they look like they figured out how to play together. We'll talk about it all on today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And now... Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. If you're looking for in-depth analysis, game-by-game breakdowns, highlights, interviews with local and national experts, full coverage of your Sacramento Kings from January through December, this is the place for you, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. And today's episode is brought to you by Truebill, the new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions that you don't want or need. And Truebill can even negotiate better deals on those that you want to keep. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I've been a Sacramento Sports Media member for the last seven years. This is my eighth season covering Sacramento Kings basketball, formerly for Sports 1140 KHDK Radio in Sacramento, now with ABC 10 Television. Very excited to talk about this game here tonight, but we're actually going to start talking about the performance of Marvin Bagley. And I'm going to start with a question that I'm going to pose to all of you listening because Marvin has suddenly found himself getting consistent playing time, and he has been delivering since Alvin Gentry took over as the interim head coach of the Sacramento Kings. I don't think that's a coincidence. We know that there were issues between Marvin Bagley and and Luke Walton, maybe, maybe more specifically Marvin Bagley's camp and Luke Walton. We know they weren't happy with how Luke was choosing to use Marvin Bagley, so much so that uh, Luke decided not to play Marvin, that Marvin wasn't even going to be in the, the rotation at the start of the season. I agreed with that decision at the time, but I agree with the decision right now for Alvin Gentry to be playing Marvin for just what he's been providing uh, Sacramento on a nightly basis. But the question that I pose for you here this evening, should Marvin Bagley be considered, actually not even considered because the answer is yes, should Marvin Bagley be the starting four for the Sacramento Kings? Back into the starting lineup, playing alongside Rashawn Holmes at the starting five spot, Marvin at the four with Barnes at the three, Fox at the two, or rather Fox at the one, Halliburton at the two. Should Marvin Bagley be a starter? And that's a crazy question to ask considering less than a month ago, Marvin wasn't playing at all. And a few months or maybe a month before that, we were talking about Marvin's days being completely done here in Sacramento, that his his future with the Kings was completely gone. And it may still be. I, I spoke on a recent Locked on Kings podcast last week on why I still feel that Marvin's future with the Kings is, is, is in jeopardy or is more than likely non-existent, that he will more than likely be either traded this uh, at this trade deadline or um, be picked up by another team or signed by another team this offseason. I still feel that Marvin is more than likely not going to be a Sacramento King uh, beyond this season. But while he is here, I think there is a conversation to be had about whether or not he is the right fit at the starting four spot. So I'll, I'll let you formulate your thoughts and I want you to send them to me. If you're watching on YouTube, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. You can tweet me on Twitter at Matt George Sack, tweet me publicly or DM me privately. My DMs are open, even if we don't follow each other. Uh, and you can uh, email me, mattgeorgesports at gmail.com if you'd like. I really want to hear your general thoughts uh, on this because it's it's something, it's a position that I did not expect us to be in at any point so far this season. But it's also not a position that is completely unheard of when it comes to the talent and the ability of Marvin. Here are my thoughts on the entire situation, and don't allow my opinion to completely change yours. If you feel like Marvin should be a starter, and I feel differently than you, we still should engage in a conversation about it. Don't just change it because of any point that I make. 
But I feel that the reason why Marvin is succeeding right now, the reason why Marvin is playing so well for Alvin Gentry right now, is this looks like the first time in Marvin's career that he has accepted the correct role. He has, I mean, we could question whether or not he's had an established role at any point during the season. I, in fact, I tweeted that out uh, at one point during this game, and I got a couple responses immediately from, from Kings fans about um, Marvin has had roles before, but he hasn't necessarily always bought into that role. Or he wasn't necessarily happy with that role. We know Marvin of a couple of years ago, hell, Marvin even last season, wouldn't have been happy with this off-the-bench energy rebounder scorer role that he is currently performing for uh, Alvin Gentry. It seems like now he's accepted that role. I'm not going to say that Marvin's happy with it. I don't believe Marvin is happy with the role that he has. I think Marvin wants to be a starter, believes he's a starter. His camp believes that he is a starter. But Marvin has continued throughout this season, even with the drama from what his agent said at the start of the year and all the drama off the floor with Marvin's camp. Marvin has continued to say the right things, which is I'm going to do whatever this team needs me to do while I'm here. I'm giving my all for Sacramento. Whatever they need from me, I'll do it. And looks like what the Sacramento Kings need from him and what Alvin Gentry has asked of him is you are going to play consistent minutes, potentially significant minutes off of the bench. When you come into the game, we need you to score. We need you to rebound. And I don't know if he's been challenged defensively, but the best compliment that I can give Marvin Bagley is that at no point this season have I, has I, have I thought about his defense or, or wanted to point out his defense. Like last season, he was getting torched on a nightly basis. Everybody was switching or getting him to switch on a guard. They were shooting over the top of him or, or blowing by him. Marvin was a liability defensively for the Kings last season. This season, he he looks like he belongs. Now, he still plays on a bad defensive team in the Sacramento Kings. Uh, a, a bad defensive team, by the way, who gave up 130 points to an Orlando Magic team that is, is 28th in the NBA in scoring and averages just over 100 points a game. So I'm not saying Marvin is suddenly a good defender, but he is no worse than those that he's lining alongside defensively, which still isn't great, but it's not as bad as it has been, which is progress for Marvin. It seems like he has completely accepted this role. So why do I feel that he should not be starting? I think I, I'm more than willing to listen to a conversation about him starting. And I actually wouldn't hate the idea of him being a starter. But what I like from what we're seeing out of Marvin Bagley is exactly what I just said. He's accepted this role. And this role might be the best and most correct role for him. Even if he thinks he's a starter, he seems to fit really well with what he is providing the Kings nightly now off of the bench. It's working. So there's no need to force a change, even if that starting four spot is still a weakness. That four spot was uh, was held by Harrison Barnes, who returned tonight with Terrence Davis starting at the three. I, I guess Mo Harkless, I, actually, I never saw, I never checked if Mo Harkless was available or not. I imagine he wasn't, or he probably would have gotten playing time. So I don't know if that's still Mo Harkless's spot at the four. We'll have to wait and see with Alvin Gentry going forward. But regardless, Marvin is excelling in this off-the-bench role. I think it's the right spot for him. I think it's the right fit for him. And it's led to success for the Kings. The Kings bench tonight was fantastic. And Marvin was absolutely at the center of that. So I personally feel that the Kings should stick with what's working right now. He can be a starting four. I think with how weak that spot is, he's more than capable of taking that spot. But Alvin Gentry has gotten him to buy into the role that he has right now. And it's working. So stick with it. That's where I'm at. But I want to hear from you. If you disagree with me, if you agree with me, let me know. Also, we can discuss Marvin Bagley's future with the Kings. Has these last couple of weeks of him embracing this role and providing solid numbers and really helping this Kings team win basketball games, has that changed your mind maybe on whether or not the Kings should keep him? Do you think the Kings should resist trading him at the deadline? Do you think the Kings should offer him a qualifying offer, which I thought a few weeks ago was never going to happen.
crazy how things change during a season. Let me know how you're feeling. At Matt George Sack on Twitter. Email me, mattgeorgesports at gmail.com uh, and leave your uh, thoughts down in the comment section uh, on YouTube down below. Now we're going to dive into this Kings 142-point uh, performance over the Orlando Magic. We have to talk about De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton continuing to play well together. They really have figured things out. De'Aaron Fox uh, looked fantastic. Tyrese Halliburton took over uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, the Kings offense was great. The defense wasn't, but I was very impressed by the Orlando Magic. We're going to get into all this. Plus, we have to talk about Rashawn Holmes getting poked in the eye. And if there's a negative to point out about this game, other than the defense, it's the play of Buddy Heald. And it feels like Buddy Heald's time in Sacramento and his time as a solid, consistent contributor in Sacramento, an important piece in Sacramento, Feels like that time is running out. We're going to get to all of that still uh, on today's pod. Lots to get to. Uh, but right now, I want to let you know today's podcast brought to you by Calm. Do you want to make sure or do you want to know what makes LeBron James the king? King James. It's sleep. That's right. Sleep is his superpower. Calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation. And they've teamed up with LeBron James to help you activate the power of sleep. When it comes to athletes, we tend to focus on physical fitness, but there's another side of the game that's just as important. That's mental fitness. Calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation, has teamed up with LeBron James to help you train your mind and become the champion version of yourself. LeBron and Calm know that your mind is like any other muscle in your body, but you don't have to be a world champion to learn how to train it. Calm can help you train your uh, brain so you sleep better. It reduces your stress. You can perform your best, just like King James does on basically a nightly basis. As LeBron says, quote, getting good sleep and finding time to rest is one of the most valuable things I can do for my body and my mind. From the sound of rain falling on leaves to bedtime, sleep stories, Calm puts me to sleep within minutes, which means I wake up ready for any challenge. So right now, if you head to calm.com slash locked on NBA for a limited time, you can get 40% off a Calm premium subscription. That's an awesome deal. Again, for a limited time, our listeners can join LeBron in using Calm and getting a 40% discount on a Calm premium subscription. All you have to do is go to calm.com slash locked on NBA. Unlock content that helps you focus, ease stress, and sleep better with Calm. This holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. I'm, of course, talking about Built Bar filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, both delicious and healthy. There are so many flavors you'll have a hard time choosing. Will you have a raspberry? Will you have my favorite mint brownie? Cherry, double chocolate, cookies and cream, peanut butter brownie. Those are just some of the many great flavors that Built Bar has. And Built Bar gives you that extra fuel that you need to bust down those mall doors and battle all of the holiday shoppers. Or if you're just standing in an endless shopping line, Built Bar can give you that extra something that you need to keep going. So throw one in your jacket or your purse. You'll never know when you're going to need it. This holiday season, you want to cozy up with something warm. Here's the holiday secret. Dip your Built Bar into a piping hot cup of cocoa. Let it melt and give your beverage a bit of that built bar flavor. It sounds weird. I gave it a shot. It's actually delicious. Plus you'll have a nice melty built bar to go with it. Be sure to have a couple of napkins on hand though. It can get a little bit messy right now. Go to built.com. Use promo code lock 15, get 15% off your order. Order a box right now. Try all these flavors. Tell me which one is your favorite. Again, that's 15% off at built.com using promo code locked 15, 142 points. Yeah, that's a lot of scoring. The Sacramento Kings played very, very well offensively against a weaker Orlando Magic team. This was a matchup at home that you didn't necessarily have to have, but it was a game that you should have. And finally, the Kings were able to handle business at home against a team that they should beat. Now, five out of seven of the uh, five of the last seven games have been wins uh, for the Kings. That's fantastic. They're figuring things out. They're playing well. It was nice to see them uh, come out and play uh, aggressively, offensively uh, to start this game, which is what I at least expected with all the practice time that the Kings have had recently. However, defensively, the team was horrific. I mean, especially in the first half, uh, the Kings far too many times guarding with their hands down, Orlando getting way too many easy buckets. Now, to the credit of the Kings, even though the Magic ended up scoring 130 points, uh, the Kings defensively did a much better job 
in the second half. Well, that is until they gave up 38 points in the fourth quarter, but a 25 point third quarter when the Kings outscored the magic 34 to 25, that's really where Sacramento was finally able to create some separation as Orlando hung around all night long. And to their credit, they never gave up. And, and truth be told, I was really impressed by this Orlando magic team. They are missing a lot of players right now. A lot of important pieces. Of course, this is a young team. They've only won five games. Expectations for this team is really low. I think they're the second worst team in the NBA but they got a lot of really, really solid contributions. I mean, 33 points from Cole Anthony. I liked how he's played. He's been a solid piece for them. Gary Harris with 16, Mo Bamba with 14. Suddenly Mo Bamba uh, has an, a good all-around game. We know the rim protector that he was and the rebounder that he was, but now he's hitting threes. He's able to shoot a jumper. Uh, Mo Bamba looks better. Wendell Carter Jr. looks really, really good. He finished with 19 points and 10 rebounds, uh, 7 of 14 shooting. And then Franz Wagner. Remember, Franz Wagner, if you were listening during my draft coverage here on Locked on Kings, Wagner was the guy that I wanted here in Sacramento. He's the one that I wanted the Kings to take at number nine. Of course, Orlando scooped him up at number eight. I still think Wagner would have been a phenomenal fit here in Sacramento would be a great piece uh, for this Kings team. Unfortunately, he's not here. The Kings did have, or they do have Davion Mitchell and Davion had a very solid game off the bench with 18 points on seven of 10 shooting. So it's not like the Kings are regretting uh, getting Davion when Franz Wagner uh, could have been there. But Wagner, I think, has been very, very impressive for Orlando. And he was impressive tonight. Five of 10, shooting from the field. Two of two from three-point range. Seven of seven from the free throw line. Also six rebounds, four assists, a steal. Uh, Wagner's just an all-around good player. This Orlando Magic team, I don't think, is nearly as bad as their record indicates. Like, they have a long way to go. Again, they're a young team. They're trying to figure things out. Um, but I, I like what Orlando is doing. I like what they're building, considering that they, they just broke up their roster for the main part with uh, the, the trading of Nikola Vucevic last season, uh, Aaron Gordon being gone. Like this Orlando Magic team is very, very different, but they play hard. They're a fun team to watch. They shouldn't have scored 130 points. They shouldn't be scoring that that many points. And truth be told, you see it every single time uh, an opposing team takes on the Sacramento Kings. Players come in, even if they're rookies like Wagner, who have never played the Kings before. Players come into matchups against the Sacramento Kings expecting to have a good night offensively. Like it happens way too often. The body language of opponents, whether it's in Sacramento or on the road, it just seems like everybody knows that their opportunity to score and have a good night offensively, their opportunity is, is at its best when they're playing the Sacramento Kings. Tonight's game was no different. Thankfully, the Kings had a good night offensively. They were able to uh, to beat the Magic in this ridiculous shootout. The Kings scored over 30 points in every single quarter, 38 points in both the first and the fourth, uh, 32 points in the second, 34 points in the third. Uh, and overall, it was a balanced game. I mean, the amount of times that the Kings have had six or more players finish in double figures when the Kings have won this season, the Kings win as a team. Now that they're 11 and 14, I'd say, honestly, at least eight. Of these 11 wins the Kings have had more than uh, or more than five, probably six plus um, players in, in double figure scoring. The Kings bench was excellent in this game. 14 points from Tristan Thompson, 12 points from Marvin Bagley on four of eight shooting. I already talked about how good he was. Uh, 18 points from Davion Mitchell. Alex Len, I thought, did a pretty good job after Rashawn Holmes went down. We, of course, are going to talk about Rashawn's injury. But we have to talk about the play of De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton because we were all very concerned with how they didn't look comfortable playing together. And that's another thing that looks different since Luke Walton was fired and, and Alvin Gentry uh, has taken over. Now, I'm hesitant to give Gentry all the credit. I think it's also very likely that Fox and Halliburton have used the time to their advantage to, to figure out how to play together. And, and they took a, a handful of games to get as comfortable as they seem right now. But I'm also not going to say that Gentry deserves no credit whatsoever because these two have been playing well since Alvin has taken over. And De'Aaron Fox tonight, he looked like De'Aaron Fox from last season. He looked like the De'Aaron Fox that the, the Kings and Kings fans have known and loved since he was drafted, which is that speedy burst De'Aaron Fox. He put on a clinic uh, around the rim, a very efficient 12 of 18 shooting, uh, 7 of 8 from the free throw line, which you absolutely love. He finished with 33 points, uh, also had uh, three rebounds, only one assist, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Like He wasn't necessarily distributing. Tyrese Halliburton took over the distribution duties, but look, if De'Aaron is going to be your best scorer and Tyrese is going to be your best passer and they're doing so at the same time on a nightly basis, you'll take that 100 times out of 100. Uh, if, if you're the Sacramento Kings. So De'Aaron only getting one assist. I'm not concerned about that at all. Uh, he looked quick. He looked confident. He was smiling. Uh, and uh, more importantly, that burst that 
uh, putting the shoulder down, playing downhill is what stood out the most to me about De'Aaron Fox playing. Love to see that. And then Tyrese Halliburton, who had a good game up into the fourth quarter, turned it into a great game. Uh, I think he had only seven points heading into the fourth, and he finishes with 18 points, also 11 assists. So that's a very Chris Paul-esque double-double. Uh, shot six of nine from the field, five of six from three-point range. He was fantastic. Uh, and he, I mean, we know his connections that he has with Rashawn Holmes and how well uh, he and Rashawn play together in the two-man game. But his connections with uh, Al, or, uh, Alex Len, he threw a lob to Alex Len. He had connections with Tristan Thompson. He, he just can make everybody around him better. Like that's the biggest compliment that I can give Tyrese Halliburton in just a second uh, season in the NBA, not even a second full season. I mean, he's only a couple months into his second season and he missed some time in a condensed first season. He looks as comfortable as he possibly can running an offense. He looks like he can make everybody around him or optimize everybody around him, get them to play uh, their best and 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 give them what they need uh, to succeed. That is an incredible feat uh, for someone who is as young and inexperienced, which I use with air quotes, um, as Tyrese Halliburton is. So love the fact that he and Fox are playing so well together. Uh, I don't love the fact, though, that, that poor Rashawn Holmes missed the majority of this game for getting poked in the exact same eye that he missed a handful of games for having an eye contusion for, and he got poked really, really bad. We're going to talk about uh, that incident and what it could mean for the Kings if Rashawn is is missing more time uh, because of that. Also, we have to give credit to the Kings bigs for picking up the slack when Rashawn went down, and yes, uh, an unfortunate and somewhat uncomfortable conversation regarding Buddy Heal that's still to come. I hope you made money, though, on tonight's game. I hope you took the over on point totals. If you did, you probably did it on Bet Online, and hopefully you you cash in on Bet Online. They have you covered all season long with more props, more odds, more lines than ever before. All football season with the uh, NFL playoffs coming up, college football going on, of course, and then the NBA season and college basketball. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. You can head to their new updated desktop or mobile website and sign up today. You'll receive a fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you have to do is use promo code Locked On to receive that bonus. It's free money for you to play with and make money with from basketball to football, NHL hockey, boxing to UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts. Will someone get Rashawn Holmes some glasses or a visor? Hell, put him in a medieval helmet at this point. Poor guy just keeps getting hit in the face, and this one was the, the worst it's looked. Now, uh, about a, a little over a week ago, a couple weeks ago, actually, um, against the 76ers, Rashawn was poked in the eye by Andre Drummond, completely inadvertent, uh, and it ended up taking him... Actually, he, he returned to that game, never really looked the same, and then ended up missing a handful of games. I think it was like three games or something like that uh, with a, a, a eye contusion. Uh, he, he comes back. We know how important Rashawn Holmes is to this Kings team, uh, the starting center of this team without a doubt. And in tonight's game, unfortunately, after being fouled by Wendell Carter Jr., Mo Bamba comes over the top trying to block his shot and make sure he can't complete the three-point play. Does block the shot, but his, uh, his long hand comes down and clocks Rashawn right in the eye. Uh, Rashawn drops to the floors, holding his face, and we're thinking, oh God, wh what's going on? What happened this time? And then the camera gets a, a glimpse of Rashawn just bleeding from, it looked like from his eye. I'm hoping that the blood was actually coming from like the bridge of his nose, like he got the bridge of his nose cut. I don't know. We never got confirmation on that, but that amount of blood in the same eye that Rashawn got hit just a couple days ago, or just a couple weeks ago, rather, that's not a good sign at all. He ended up leaving the game, was questionable for a while, then did not return. Um, and if Rashawn Holmes is out, that means uh, that starting five spot, does it go to Alex Len? Do you give it to Tristan Thompson? Both of them, I thought, played pretty well in this game. Tristan Thompson was very effective, very energetic in this game. Or, like we talked about at the beginning of the pod, do you consider Marvin Bagley at that starting five spot temporarily and give that a look? I think more than likely uh, Gentry would go with one of Thompson or Len, depending upon the matchup, just because he's more confident maybe in them and, and they've played that starting five spot or that five role more consistently before. 
uh, this season. Uh, so you, you'll probably go with that, but that also could mean more minutes regardless for Marvin, maybe as a five, as a four. Uh, and we'll have to see how that affects the Sacramento Kings. But if the Kings do get contributions from their bigs, the same way they got tonight after Rashawn Holmes went down, the Kings are going to be okay. Like I'm, I'm not trying to diminish the importance of Rashawn Holmes. You can definitely make it up. You need uh, multiple players to play well to make up what Rashawn provides, but it's not the end of the world. It's not the same if De'Aaron Fox or Tyrese Halliburton were to go down um, with an injury. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, Thompson playing very, very well. He had a moment uh, where he dunked on, I think it was Wendell Carter Jr. and had some words for Wendell Carter instantly issued a technical foul dude could care less he was just waving it off and and and, and talking and john flex into the crowd tristan thompson was feeling himself tonight and in his i don't think he played much if at all in the first half um well he had to have because he played 21 minutes in this game uh, but in those 21 minutes 14 points 10 rebounds 6 of 11 shooting uh was very aggressive very energetic and was that enforcer that the kings have been lacking in, in recent seasons which is nice to see and then of course alex len you know how much i like alex his big body uh, his size so depending upon matchups uh, he's more than capable of picking up that slack if rashawn has to miss more games so i have confidence in those kings bigs in order to uh to pick up that slack I am, though, losing confidence and have almost completely lost confidence in one Kings player. And that is one Buddy Heald, who has quickly found himself going from the sixth man of this Kings team and arguably the most important player offensively when he should never have been. But the way the Kings were playing earlier this season, it looked like Buddy Heald was the most important offensive player on this team. And the Kings were only going to go as far as Buddy Heald shot them. And more than often, Buddy shot them out of games. He's gone from that to now he's a role player off the bench. And he's not the first off the bench. He's not the second off the bench. He might not even be the third or fourth uh, off the bench anymore. With Terrence Davis playing well uh, recently and Terrence Davis belonging in the starting lineup, in my opinion, um, Buddy has found himself on the outside looking in. Now, he still played 17 and a half minutes in this game. But in those 17 and a half minutes, he went two of 13 from the field, one of 10 from three point range. So even with significantly less minutes, Buddy Heald still got double digits uh, from three point range uh, in terms of attempts and only made one of them. Like the Kings as a team shot 44% uh, from three point range with Buddy shooting one of 10. Without him, that percentage would have been significantly higher. And I'm not going to turn this into a bag on Buddy Heald session because I know a lot of Kings fans have already done that. I think it's pretty clear though where this team is going, the direction that they're headed, and how Buddy fits with that direction. Like, Buddy Heald, it would not, uh, or it would surprise me, truth be told, it would it would shock me, honestly, if Buddy Heald is still a king after the trade deadline. And if he is still a king after the trade, de trade deadline, that means that the Kings weren't able to find a deal for him and weren't able to find a suitor for him. But I think there will be suitors out there. I don't know what that package looks like. I don't know what kind of value the Kings are going to be able to get for Buddy Heald. But... I, I think the writing's on the wall for, for Buddy's future with this Kings team. And, and I honestly think that the Kings are a better team when Buddy plays limited minutes. And of course, we did get that moment. Uh, I think it was towards the end of the third quarter. Now, it was also a two-for-one opportunity, so we have to be fair to give the proper context. But Buddy is is, is running the ball up the floor and, and takes a like 35, 38-footer straight-on three with like 19 seconds on the shot clock, misses that shot. Kings get the offensive rebound, but he gets a closer look at three, misses that. Thankfully, Marvin was there for the putback dunk. Uh, but that sequence right there is the epitome of Buddy Heald. Like he just will chuck up threes and he was searching. He was desperately trying to find his shot tonight and he could not find it. And the Kings were better off with him on the bench uh, and, and it continues to show. So I don't know if you feel the same way, but I personally see the uh, Buddy Heald on the outs here in Sacramento. I personally see his days coming to an end uh, as a Sacramento King and his importance, his significance with the Kings uh, is less. And honestly, at this point in time, I think where it should be if the Kings are going to be a good basketball team. They're not there yet, but if the Kings are going to be a good basketball team, they're never going to be good if they are relying on Buddy Heald uh, to make eight or nine of 17 three-pointers. And now Buddy is shooting like 35% from the field or from three-point range this season, which is definitely not elite like so many of us uh, have, have tried to label Buddy an elite shooter in the past. So 
I want to hear your thoughts. Your thoughts on Buddy Heald, your thoughts on Marvin Bagley, your thoughts on Rashawn Holmes. The Kings playing well. De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton. The Kings winning five out of the last seven. Are you starting to believe again? Are you still cautious? Let me know how you're feeling. Overall, it's great to, to talk about Kings wins, and we've been able to enjoy them. The first three-game win streak uh, of the season. Now the Kings go on the road for three um, interesting Eastern Conference matchups. Not going to be easy by any means uh, as the this important month of December continues. Appreciate your support of the Locked On Kings podcast. If you could leave a review of Locked On Kings, that would be fantastic. Best place to do that is on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. Hit five stars. Leave a little blurb about uh, what you like about the podcast. Any constructive criticism that you have can go there. Uh, why you would encourage others to listen to Locked on Kings. All of that is fair game. I really would appreciate that. And of course, please join me for another Locked on Kings pod in the future. I have planned to have Tony East, the host of the Locked on Pacers podcast, with me tomorrow. Because if you haven't heard the news, the Pacers are looking to blow things up and are potentially going to be major sellers at this trade deadline. DeMontis Savonis, Miles Turner, Karis LeVert, could any of these three be headed to Sacramento? Could they be good fits for Sacramento? And what would it take for the Kings to get one of those players? Maybe the Pacers are interested in Buddy Heald. We'll talk to uh, to Tony about that, so I hope you'll join me for that podcast. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to Locked On Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.